What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out why people are laughing at Ronda Rousey's failure. Now, I seen uh, some of you guys um, suggest that I check out this video from uh, Sunny V2 since um, we were just recently uh, talking about um, why Ronda Rousey has been, you know, receiving hate from people from WWE and UFC on a, you know, production side of things where um, people feel like she's, you know, just unnecessarily mean and rude to people that, you know, maybe helping her with uh, the microphones or behind the scenes with the camera work or just, you know, producers or whatever the case is, she's not liked behind the scenes. So some of you guys wanted me to check this out. So I'm going to definitely check this out, see what's going on with this whole situation. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. 17 million followers but with only a couple thousand likes per post it's safe to say ronda rousey Damn, has really? only a few active fans through hypocrisy a massive ego and undeniable delusion ronda rousey has become one of the most unlikable athletes ever recently wrecking her final career opportunity and sparking a mass exodus of social media followers so Damn. why are people so happy to see her fail well arrogance that's why what makes me so confident that I can win is I'm the greatest fighter in the world. Now, in the beginning, Ronda's arrogant statements were at least partially justified. Mm -hmm. She'd spent four years winning every fight available, although there was one massive issue. Nine out of her 12 fights were won using the exact same move, submission via armbar. Fans would therefore label Ronda a one-trick pony because while being extremely skilled at armbars, she was seriously lacking in other MMA areas. As far back as 2012, people wrote, does anyone else think Ronda Rousey is greatly overrated? Her striking game is almost non-existent. Is she a good judoka? Absolutely. Is she a good mixed martial artist? Not at all. And Ronda had a very limited approach. She didn't kick, and she wasn't necessarily the most skillful boxer. She didn't really have a tremendous amount of experience. Her lack of striking ability has since been featured in compilations such as this one, while people were even commenting at her peak, anytime I need inspiration, I watch her hit a heavy bag or shadow box. If she can make it to the UFC with that sloppy garbage, then anything is possible. <laughs> Despite her oh, that's cold. And what's crazy, that was the criticism. Like, I mean, majority of her fights in you know, UFC, she was winning with an armbar. Granted, I mean, she's still winning, you know, but that was her bread and butter. Until it wasn't her bread and butter, and she was forced to stand up and have that stand-up confrontation, and, well, y'all know what happened. Her obvious weak spots, Ronda maintained her arrogance. I know the level of my striking is at, and um, that's one of the advantages that I have is they don't really know. Which even extended to her personal life. I really wouldn't want to waste any time on a guy that is easily intimidated by me. I mean, there's more intimidating things in life than me. So right. if that stopped you already, then you're just saving my time. Although there was no better example of arrogance than her 12th and final UFC win. Autistical look on her face as if she couldn't be beaten by anyone. Ronda refused to show even the smallest bit of humility and as explained by one of the comments, this was probably the worst thing that could have happened to Rousey. This fight was her downfall as it made her far too confident in her bad striking and she never felt the need to improve anything which was especially bad given her next opponent was Holly Holm a 19-time boxing world champion. In the lead-up to their fight, Holly was humble and extremely kind. As far as Ronda's performance... I remember this, too. Because uh, she was like, you know what I'm saying? She's a great champion. She was very humble. And Ronda didn't give a single fuck because she thought she couldn't be touched. And I was like, this is probably not going to end well. And as y'all know, it didn't end well. Performances, not just some of them have been impressive, all of them have been impressive. So, I mean, nobody can argue with that. While Ronda was extremely rude, maintaining that nobody could ever beat her. Yeah. Beating Holly Holmes is definitely in my hands and I'm gonna do it. Ronda's arrogance was even worse in other interviews. I'm great at this, I'm the best at this. I'm more prepared than she is for this and I'm gonna win on Sunday and everyone's gonna see. Still refusing to show a single shroud of humility. Mm -hmm. I'm better than every other girl in every area of MMA. MMA and here's the thing, there's nothing wrong with talking your shit or whatever, That that's cool. That's part of combat sports, that's the way you sell the fight. But at the same time, if you don't back it up and you lose 
you got to be ready what comes your way. You have to. And she didn't just lose. She got packed up. But you'll see. MMA striking is different and I think I'm the best at it. When the day of their fight finally came, Halsey refused. And while Ronda had just four... Mm -hmm. I remember she, she didn't even show her respect and she got packed. And I want to say right before their fight, they're talking about this particular... Uh, she was on a talk show, a late night talk show, and she was clowning Holmes. And she got packed. Weeks prior stated... She can try and kick me in the head, but it's not going to go like that. Not the way she wants. This is exactly how the fight ended. Yep. Holly knocked Ronda out with a kick to the head, with Ronda's face from before and after the fight confirming she'd been completely humble. Well, just kidding. Ronda refused to accept that Holly was simply better. I think that it's probably just hard for her to really maybe admit that I was just the better fighter. And instead began to make braggy excuses for why she uh -huh. lost the match. It was my third title fight in nine months, and I don't think anyone's ever even attempted that before. And um, that's a lot. I think the one thing that was different, I just kind of felt tired. Ronda then- That's bullshit, bro. Because you was just talking shit like it was going to be easy work. That's why. And that's when people started to pick her apart. Like, bro, you, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. You can't say that. You told, you accepted the fight. And you talked your shit and you lost. Be a man or be a woman and own up to it. It's part of the game. That's what happens. Don't talk your shit. Oh, well. Then afterwards, well, I did have three fights and nine. Bro, stop it. You was talking like it, she was going to be light work and you end up being the pack. Don't do that. That's where people realize, I, I, you full of shit, Rhonda. And tried to make the audience feel bad for her. What am I anymore if I'm not this? And I was literally sitting there and like, I'm like, I'm nothing. I'm like, oh, what do I do anymore? No one gives a shit about me anymore without this. Although the comment section wasn't having any no. of it. You know, Rhonda's ego was so out of control and she thought herself unbeatable. She had no respect for anyone and trashed all of her opponents. She deserved to get knocked out and brought down to earth. In an article titled, Rooting for Rhonda Rousey is Tough, and it has has nothing to do with her loss. ESPN highlighted that Ronda had publicly smeared Floyd Mayweather for his history of domestic violence, yet she was dating another MMA fighter who had been accused of domestic violence himself. To make matters worse, the article brought up Ronda's 2015 book in which she talked extensively about assaulting her ex-boyfriend. She punched him in the face with a straight right then a left hook. When he still wouldn't move, she slapped him again, then grabbed him by the neck of his hoodie, kneed him in the face, and tossed him aside on the kitchen floor. The incident ended, she said, at her car when he tried to prevent her from driving away and she pulled him by the neck of the hoodie again, dragged him out onto the sidewalk, and left him writhing there. This might explain why Ronda also began to claim that she could beat the male heavyweight UFC champion stating, you cannot tell me that it's physically impossible. It is possible that in any given moment that I could beat him. I simply believe in my possibilities. UFC fighter Ian McCall politely responded, She's dangerous, she's good, I get it, but it's just silly. Meanwhile, on Reddit, people dunked on Ronda mercilessly. In any given moment, under the right circumstances, I think it is possible. Sure, but arm barring a man while he is sleeping is just a dick move. But hey, it's Ronda. A different user then shared this video, showing that Ronda couldn't even keep up during a sparring session, and therefore added the comment, With this video, anyone with the deduction skills of an 8-year-old would have to say a 250-pound cane would have as much trouble with Rousey as maybe a really angry toy poodle. <laughs> Ironically, Ronda couldn't even win against those in her own division, which only became more obvious in her next fight after Holly Holm. One year after getting owned by Holly, her opponent, Amanda Nunes, Ooh. who knocked Ronda out after only 48 seconds. Yeah, nah, she got super humbled, bro. People wanted to see this fight, and she... Ooh, ooh, ooh. She let it be known, nah, Rhonda, your time at the top is over. You don't belong here no more. She made it very clear that Rhonda did not belong in the same octagon as her, bro. Ronda's face from before and after the fight was again extremely poetic, with the top comment stating, Holly took her to school and Amanda straight up expelled her. Such an embarrassing loss for one of the most arrogant, ungracious fighters in MMA. Love to see it. In the lead up to the fight, the media had said about Ronda, If she doesn't win impressively, I think this is her last fight. If she loses, 
I don't think we ever see her again. Which turned out to be true, although Rhonda still refused to admit that she wasn't the better fighter. Do you think about the last couple fights? Do you think about the last fight against Amanda or, or Holly? I think I'd just rather not talk about that right now. Poor Ronda, she still can't get over those two losses in the UFC. You can clearly tell every time someone asks her questions about her return to MMA. She'd post a photo to her Instagram reading, and so rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life, which turned out to be accurate, as she'd soon find another chance at repairing her public image. In January 2018, Ronda Rousey signed a full-time- And this is where things get it. Looks like things are going on the up and up, but then Rhonda, being Rhonda, being arrogant, she she messes it up. You'll see. Time WWE contract. But you're doing this full time now, right? This is your this is your job. Full time. They they got me for a multi year deal. And after her debut match, she was surprisingly loved by the audience. She was. The Washington Post wrote the match exceeded expectations. Yes. With fans firmly behind Rousey, even breaking out into yes. Bro, her first match. I was not, bro, highly. That was honestly the best match of that uh that year's WrestleMania, bro. And she was fantastic. That shit was fantastic. I loved every. She killed it. She was on the up and up and she was having some good matches with some of the top stars. And once again, her ego. Chance at points. While comments on the debut video read, glad to see her smiling again. Reminds me of when she first started her MMA career. She was so genuine here. Hard to see why anyone could hate her. Yeah. I'm actually excited to see her. I just hope Vince doesn't screw this up. Although as highlighted by a later comment reading, it's impressive how she managed to turn both the MMA and wrestling fan bases against her. Her WWE like ability wouldn't last long. Nope. Because the show chose to pin Ronda against an even more beloved wrestler wrestler Becky Lynch, and as a result, Ronda was painted as the villain and booed by fans during every mm -hmm. single match. As a part of their storyline, Becky was arrested, posting the mugshots to her Twitter where Ronda completely lost it. That's what I'm trying to do, dumbass. You hobbling around trying to be a ginger crutch ninja and taking fake prison photos in the hallway isn't helping. Becky responded with, keep that F word out of your mouth and concentrate on getting better at this business instead of trying to remain above it. Looking forward to saying you're real soon and this is the problem she started burying the business the business that you was a part of why would you do that this is when people started to turn her on not just because of the character it's because the shit she was saying on twitter like bro what are you doing you're burying the business why it's stupid like she didn't understand it she didn't, she didn't get it so she started burying it Ronda then responded again stating yep. F word you mean fake fake like your nonsensical BS armbar that doesn't even work and just looks like you're holding the dick you wish you had before doubling down by writing I don't care what the script says I'm beating the living shit out of you the next time I see you but while the drama seemed to have been set up by the show Ronda continued to bash the WWE on her YouTube channel it's not an act I'm not going out there and doing their fucking act anymore I meant that I'm going to disrespect the sport that they all love so much it's scripted. It's made up. It's not real. Less than a month later, WWE took Ronda off the show, yet she only continued to bash them, writing, anyone who is outraged by me calling pro wrestling fake fights for fun has never been in a real fight. While you all are tiptoeing around bruising some pro wrestlers' huge soft egos, no one is thinking about all the real fighters you're insulting when pretending pro wrestling is somehow on the same level of realism. Ronda then appeared on Steve-O's podcast again calling wrestling fake, having like big fights for fun. Like, I love choreography. I love acting. I love theater. Before bravely bashing her fans. Spending my time on energy on a bunch of fucking ungrateful fans that don't even appreciate me. And claiming she'd never return to WWE. And here, here's the thing. Look at this. Kayfabe killer, bro. Like, what are you doing? That fucking stupid. Just stupid. Then why join you fucking moron? That's how I always felt. If you felt like it was just fake and all this other stuff, and it's 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 an insult to real wrestling or whatever, real sports, then why the fuck did you join? That's dumb, bro. This is why people don't fucking like her. She's a fucking asshole for no reason. 
never to be full time again, over 200 days a year like that ever again. The irony was that three years later, Rhonda did exactly that, albeit with the attitude that she was too good to even be there. Can't speak for anyone else, but for me, it really shone through that she wasn't enjoying herself, especially with the complaints about fan reactions. She never looked like she wanted to be there and acted like pro wrestling was, was beneath, beneath her, her yes. whether true or not, it's how it came off. Hashtag fire Ronda Rousey therefore began to trend on Twitter, which became a reality only four months later as she'd be booted from wrestling again. With almost zero career prospects, Ronda Rousey agreed to an extensive Raid Shadow Legends deal and has spent the last year writing another book, the release of which has made her a total laughing stock. Mm -hmm. Over the last month, she's promoted the book on various podcasts, leading to a Reddit post showing that nine years later, Ronda Rousey is still making excuses for losing to Holly Holm. My mouth guard was bad. I literally came into that fight concussed from slipping down some stairs already after our, all these years of uh, concussions and then I had Oh my god, bro. I slipped down some stairs and I was already con pre con Bro, shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> Shut up. It's so lame. Had an absolutely terrible weight cut, which, you know, you have, that means you have less fluid in your brain to cut to protect it. Rhonda then made even more excuses on Steve-O's podcast. I have no ACL. I tore my ACL falling down that stairs two weeks before that fight, the home fight. Leading to some pretty funny comments such as, tore my ACL, had a concussion, bad weight cut, I had bubble guts, my car wouldn't start, <laughs> my dog ate my homework, and I've had scoliosis since I was three. So yeah, didn't really lose, did I? Ironically, Ronda also stated this. I'm the greatest fighter that is that has ever lived because I've never been faster, never been stronger, never had a better grasp of the game. I've never been so much better than everybody else. Yet when Steve-O kindly offered props to Logan Paul, Ronda Rousey refused to accept it. How about Logan Paul? Like him or dislike him? That dude fire. is a performer. Yeah. He, he's great on the mic. He does a great job on the mic. But and I mean, I, I wish that I was allowed the time to rehearse that he gets because it's not not evenly spread. It's it's frustrating that like everybody doesn't get that treatment. Ronda is jealous that Logan is already a better wrestler than she ever was. Bass. I think oh. she might be unhappy with how her run in the WWE went, but I don't know anything really about that. It seems Ronda Rousey has burned every bridge she could possibly burn, which which when combined with her complete lack of fans, makes it highly likely her career is done and dusted. Yeah, bro, no one cares. She she burned bridges in UFC, didn't want to give people the proper, you know, credit for them winning. Like, bro, if I got my ass kicked and I got humbled, hey, he, he beat me up or she beat me up. What, not she, but you know, he beat me up. <laughs> Well, then, you know, there's some cold MMA ladies out there, so I don't know. But I got packed up. Hey, they were the better fighter that day. Even if I have injuries, even if I have whatever going on, if I win that, I'm not going to list my injuries. You know what I'm saying? Or if I do, I won with this injury. If I lose, I'm not going to say nothing because I just lost. I don't want there no asterisk on why I lost. I lost. The better person won that day. You give them respect because... Among, you could talk your shit, but you give them respect like they the next one. It would have been cool if Ronda said, you know what? I talked a lot of shit, but she's the next one up. She's the next one. She's taking this division to new heights. And then build your work on your work on your standing up game. Go back to the basics. Switch it up because people finally figured your formula out and then they pat you up. That's it. But this whole notion of, ah. Uh, I fell down the stairs and uh, that's what happened. I was already pre-concussed. I tore some ligaments. Yeah. But I still went out there and, f and fought. Oh, I had three matches in, in one year. You know, no one's ever done that. Or nine months. You know, I, I, I wasn't really truly prepared, but I was still talking trash. And then you get to WWE and you try to bury the business that you wanted to be a part of. It's lame. This is why. She's not like now it, it, it makes it even more believable because if you go into a business thinking you're better than everybody else because you come from MMA or whatever, you're full of shit. Then don't be in the business. Don't be in the business. I don't know, bro. She's kind of lame. Comment down below. Let me know how y'all feel about Ronda Rousey, man, because honestly, I, I mean, I really don't have no personal feelings, so I really honestly don't give a fuck. But it's just one of those things I hate when people...
come into the business, get a good payday and try to shit on it because they feel like whatever they were in before is much better. Then don't come. If you think it's lame, you think it's trash or fake, whatever, cool. Just don't be a part of it. But don't try to shit on people for liking something that honestly has been around for a very long time. The shit has been around way longer than the UFC has been a thing. Wrestling has been around for a very long time. It's very lucrative and it's growing as we speak. If you don't like it, don't fucking watch it. Simple as that. I hate people that do that shit. Especially when you're trying to come into the business to make some money to shit on it. Get the fuck out of here. Appreciate all love sport. Road time 50k and I'm still young speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.